Hi there, my name is Tom Belton and I work for PJCO Charter Certified Accountants down in Shoreham here. And today I'm just doing a video on the banking tab of QuickBooks. So on this page at the moment, I'm on the dashboard. So I'm just going to go to the banking tab on the left hand side here. And here we'll see any bank accounts we've got connected to QuickBooks pop up. So in a normal case, these accounts will be connected to your online banking account and that will mean that the transactions flow into here automatically from your bank. Um, in some cases you may have to import the transactions via a data import from Microsoft Excel but either way it will get your transactions in here looking like this in the full review tab ready to be reviewed. So if I just go over to the current account here we're going to see a few transactions that have rules applied to them so rules are when you've got transactions that occur quite frequently in your account so you set quickbooks up to say that any time quickbooks reads a specific detail you want quickbooks to then allocate that transaction in a specific way i will go into rule, how to create rules shortly but for now i'm just going to go back to this paypal account and show you how to allocate a few expense transactions without rules so if we click into this transaction here, the bank just says general currency conversion, but that is just the way that this file was imported. So the key thing that we want to do is click into it, and when we do, lots of details going to pop up. So you, some of you may see some of these boxes, some of you won't. So customer, class, and location will be optional boxes that may appear depending on if you've got the advanced settings turned on. Tax code will only appear if you're VAT registered and got that turned on in your QuickBooks account. So the key things we want to work through are the transaction type. So when I click into this box, you'll see expense or transfer. Some of you in your QuickBooks account may see transfer as a little button up here instead now. But for this purpose, we've got expense and transfer here. Check is very infrequently used, to be honest. So if we just focus on expense and transfer, Transfer will only really be required if you are transferring money between bank accounts. That can be either between business bank accounts or between the business bank and a director's personal account. Um, you won't really need to use transfer for any other situations other than that. So if we work our way through this, let's say this was an expense to Ryman's. And we stick the supplier in there and for Ryman's we want to select the category as print postage and stationery that's so when we select the category you'll see that this tax code automatically popped up and that will be because at some point in the past we selected the category print postage and stationery and we selected the tax code 20% while selecting that category so QuickBooks has tried to remember what we set the tax code to be based on previous actions we've conducted so that will be all the data that we need to put in if you've got optional classes set up that you want to use then that's fine so if we want to say we spent this in brighton and hove let's say we can then add that in so you've then added that transaction and it will have disappeared from this full review tab of the banking screen and gone into reviewed which means it's now been allocated as an expense to print postage and stationery and you have dealt with the transaction in bookkeeping terms. So that's how to deal with transactions that don't have rules or receipts matched to them. Um, if I now go back to the current account and show you rules, I'm just going to come down to this transaction where it says Vodafone. So the rule that's applied here is the Vodafone rule, so if I just click onto that, what we've got here is it's saying for money out of the current account, when the transaction has bank text that equals Vodafone and just as a note on this one description will be the default that's selected when you create a bank rule but I always recommend switching to bank text just because it's a little bit more accurate in picking up the detail so the rule is saying that when the bank text equals Vodafone it then wants you to do this with it so it wants to create an expense with Vodafone as the payee a category as telephone and tax code of 20% you then get the option to add any further detail in you'd like classes or locations or even a memo down here as well you get the chance to say auto categorize and auto add 
or auto categorize and manually review so if we leave it as manually review it's going to appear in the bank feed like we are seeing at the moment where it's saying the rule if you click auto categorize and auto add you won't see it in the bank feed it will just automatically go in to a, as a telephone expense as soon as quickbooks reads vodafone in the bank text so i'm going to leave it as auto, cat, auto categorize and review just to be safe so if i click save this is where we'll now see it so all you have to do for your bookkeeping is look at cast your eye over it and say yep that's right i want to add that in so that's how rules will look to create a rule you can do this in one of two ways you can go to the rules tab at the top here or if i go back to the banking section you can click on a transaction so say the ryman's one here and scroll down a bit and we'll have create rule from this transaction this is the easier way to do it because when we do it this way it pulls in all of the information from the transaction so if i now just call this rule ryman's I want to say that it's money out of just the current account for this situation. I'm going to change description to bank text, like I mentioned, just because it's a little bit more accurate. And what we've got here is another line that's saying the amount equals five pounds. Now, this is fine if you've got a monthly standing order, for example, where the amount's always going to be the same. But if you're creating a rule for something where the amount will be different, you can just get rid of this line so that it means that the condition only needs the bank text to equal Ryman's. So now we want to say we want to tell QuickBooks what to do with it once it's found out that the bank text says Ryman's. So we've got expense as the transaction type, we've got Ryman's as the payee, and we've got print, postage and stationery as the category. The cat tax code again is populated to 20%. And you'll see here that lo location has populated Brighton Hove because that's what I selected on that last transaction that for Ryman's. So I'm just going to leave that in there as Brighton and Hove. And I'm now going to click save. So when I now come back to the banking tab, we'll see here that this rule has been applied for Ryman's. And you can now click add on that. So any future transactions for Ryman's will all come up with that rule on them. Um, so there is one other feature of the banking tab that is going to be quite frequently used and that is the find match option so you'll see on this transaction we've got three records found and the box ticked up here says match and this is QuickBooks saying that we've found something that we think relates to this transaction so now for received income that's likely to be invoices that you created in QuickBooks such as in this situation here so QuickBooks is saying we found three invoices for this amount uh, which one of these do you want to match this payment to and if I say for example that we want to match it to this one on the 22nd of March and then click match that's going to then record the payment of that invoice you may also have the same for expenses depending on if you use receipt bank or auto entry or even QuickBooks receipt snap um, if you've created an expense let's say for example for 159 pounds and you said I spent 159 pounds worth on accountancy and I spent it out of the business current account let's say for example uh, what you see here is one record found instead of the rule so when you then click that match option it's going to move the transaction out of the banking tab out of the ref for review screen to the reviewed section where it will then be recorded as an expense and matched to the transaction that QuickBooks has found. So those are the basics of the banking tab. If you have any questions or any um, features that, that you might be interested in about QuickBooks, just let me know. My email address is tom at peterjarmo.com and it would be great to hear from you. Thank you. See you later.